Hi, I'm Megan. Welcome to today's live reading from the Rocklands Collection by Alicia Street, presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. This excerpt is from Lovers in Training. Join me. Chapter one. After eight hours of waitressing on her feet, racing back and forth with burgers and beer orders for impatient customers, Shannon Rockland stepped out into the bitter cold January night, tugging the collar up on her fleece jacket, visions of her warm, cozy bed in her mind. On the weekend, Richie's Pub in Sag Harbor stayed open until 2 a.m., but stopped serving food at midnight, so only the bartender stayed till closing. Only about five cars dotted the dimly lit parking lot that had been packed a couple hours ago, which it always was on weekends since Richie's was one of the few pubs that didn't shut down in the dead of winter here in the resort towns on the tip of Long Island. Shannon heard snickering and squinted into the dark to see two hulking figures strolling toward her. Oh, no. It was the same two guys who'd been hitting on her all night when they kept ordering more pitchers of beer long after they finished their burgers. Were they just fooling around out here, or were they waiting for her? She told herself not to get paranoid, but just in case, her feet sped up as she made a beeline in the direction of her car. Not fast enough. They joined her, one on either side, and the guy with greasy blonde hair and shoulders the size of a table slurred out. Where are you going, sweet cheeks? We've got some partying to do. I told you, I don't date customers. Hey, you're off work, so we're not customers anymore. They both burst into loud guffaws like that was the most brilliant and witty line. The dark-haired lanky one said, You like doing two at a time? That comment brought another round of hysterical laughter from them, but it sent a trickle of dread down her spine. Why hadn't she listened when her cousin suggested she carry pepper spray on the night she worked late? Cousin Shannon had thought he was being overprotective. After living in L.A., the small towns and villages of Long Island's East End seemed like a cute little candy land to her. But right now, it was clear these two guys weren't going to back off and that she was in trouble. Shannon glanced right and left, but saw only a man and woman at the far end of the lot, presumably walking to into their car. She thought she heard the door to the bar open and close, but before she could turn her head to see if anyone came out, the burly dude grabbed her by the waist. You're in for the best night of your life, sweet cheeks. His buddy ran ahead and opened the back door to a black SUV as Mr. Burley dragged her in that direction. Stop it, let go of me, Shannon yelled, hoping someone from the bar might hear her, but she knew the rock music blaring inside made it doubtful. She tried to pry the guy's arm off or wiggle out of it. When that didn't work, she swung her purse with all her might and smacked him on the side of his face. That made him let go, but his friend was right there when she tried to run away. He grabbed her arm and pinned them he grabbed her arms and pinned them back. Got her, Jamie. Shannon tried to kick his shins that were right behind her, but he held her off balance and she missed. Oh, you're gonna pay for that one, Jamie said in a low growl as he stalked toward her, rubbing his cheek where her purse had hit him. He pulled Shannon from his friend's grasp and shoved her hard against the SUV. She screamed, panic setting in. Leave her alone. Another man said another man's voice just behind her tormentor. Was someone there to help her? With a hand gripping her upper arm so she couldn't run, the one called Jamie turned to the side and she saw a guy in a short leather jacket and jeans. He looked fit, but of course her bully towered over him. Who the hell are you? Jamie said. A gentleman, unlike you, the man said in a deep, smooth voice. voice. Take a walk, asshole, before you get hurt. Although the guy in the leather jacket had so far saved her from being tossed into the SUV and driven to who nowhere, she wasn't so sure what the final outcome would be. During the few beats of tense silence that followed, Shannon added up the odds. One enormous linebacker-sized bully plus his ra rangy pal against one average-sized guy and a 120-pound woman. Not good. If Jamie and his sidekick both started beating on the guy who was trying to help her, she couldn't make it to the bar and get someone to stop them before they heard him. Your friend is plainly drunk, said the man in the leather jacket, turning to the bully's smirking pal who stood next to the open passenger door. I suggest you drive him back to the hole he crawled out of so he can sleep it off. You're the one that's going to sleep right now, Jamie said, and lunged at the guy, obviously aiming for a knockout punch. But the stranger stepped to the side, and the punch went into space. Her rescuer then countered in the blink of an eye with three quick punches of his own, the difference being all these all landed on the button. 
Next thing Shannon saw was the, the woman abusing dirtbag sprawled out on the ground, moaning in pain. Next, the man asked, looking at Jamie's drinking buddy who had already who already had his hands up, palms out. No, I uh then I suggest you take him to the ER because it looks like I might have accidentally broken his jaw. Shannon stood there stunned, her heart still racing. The stranger in the leather jacket grasped her arm and tugged her away from the car and the two men. Stand over there until they leave. His focus staying on the rangy guy as he maneuvered his friend into the SUV. Her rescuer then backed up and picked up her pocketbook where it had landed when she heaved it at Jamie's head. She rushed, for rushed forward as he held it out to her. I don't know how to thank you, she said, still jittery with the after effects of being manhandled. I won't even let myself imagine what might have happened if you hadn't interfered. That's okay. We're good. He smiled and Shannon's breath caught as she suddenly noticed how devastatingly, he ha devastatingly handsome he was. A sexy mouth and a gem cut face with a tiny cleft in his chin. Sky blue eyes that contrasted with olive skin. Dark hair that curled over the collar of his jacket. If this were a movie, they couldn't have picked a more perfect guy. Excuse me. To play the hero. She was tempted to play grateful damsel and throw her arms around him in thanks. She had heard the sound of the SUV driving off and realized she was staring at her rescuer. Either he misinterpreted her behavior or was kind enough not to show, he noticed. Yes, you're pretty shaken up after that, he said. Should I walk you back inside so you can chill for a bit? That's kind of you, but I really want to get home. I'd be happy to drive you there. No, thank you. I have my car here, she said, hoping she didn't offend him. But the truth was, savior or not, she didn't know him at all. Besides, I live up on the North Fork. He backed off a bit. Sorry, I should have realized how that offer would sound after what just happened. I can see how you'd be reluctant to take a ride from any man right now. Hmm, perspective. I'm very lucky you were here. Do you box or something? She asked, somehow unable to walk away from him yet. A little. He suddenly appeared shy and, looked, and it looked gorgeous on him. Well, you're obviously good at it. A corner of his mouth lifted. Believe me, it was my pleasure to put that turd away. Any man who tried to force him, tries to force himself on a woman deserves worse than what he got. They're not friends of yours, are they? God, no. I've never seen them before. They were the rudest and most offensive customers I've ever waited on in the pub. They fell into silence again and Shannon tried to look anywhere but him. She had no idea if it was the vulnerability she felt after being assaulted by two assholes and the safety this man offered or just her extreme attraction to him, but her body was screaming to have his arms around her. Guess I better get going, she forced herself to say and reached out her hand to shake his. Thanks again. My name is Tate, by the way. He shook her hand and his eyes held hers for a moment. Shannon had to literally hold her breath to keep back the sigh ready to swoon out of her, out of her at his touch. As he released her hand, she realized he was waiting for her to reply by giving her name. Geez, she never acted this stupid around a guy and wasn't about to start now. Chalking it up to a minor form of PTSD, she only said, Shannon, purposely leaving off her last name. Hey, he didn't give his either. Good night, she blurted out and forced her feet to start moving to her ancient burgundy Mazda that she still loved because it had gotten here, gotten her here all the way from California without conking out on her. I'll walk you to your car, he said following her. He seemed to sense that she was edgy now, and he stayed at a polite distance while walking close enough to give her a certain amount of protective comfort. Shannon scolded herself for wanting that comfort. She did not need a man in her life, although she had to admit this guy sure did appear at the right time earlier. Okay, so her independent nature ate a little humble pie tonight. That didn't change her goals. Two months ago, she moved to the East Coast for a new start. And she'd just gotten a new job that could be a real career, not just another no go-nowhere job. She was going to get out of debt and buy herself a little house somewhere, maybe even the one she was renting now. And she didn't need a man to do it for her or to complicate her life. As Tate closed the driver's side door and flashed that panty-dropping smile at her again, Shannon tightened her jaw, nodded a goodbye, and drove away. Tate finished his morning run on the treadmill in his home gym, but he couldn't make himself go through with his weight training routine. It was so boring. No wonder it was called a routine. He'd had so much drive and discipline in his business over the last 10 years, but now that he'd sold it, his focus was all over the place. 
He donned his gloves and walked to the heavy bag hanging on the other side of the wide, sunny room and tossed out a few punches. Hitting the bag usually got him going, but lately it just made him think about the guy he'd knocked hold a couple a week ago with an upper left left uppercut, short right, and left hook combination. Yeah, seeing that bully go down was real sweet, but not as sweet as the face of the woman he'd beat him beat on him for. Shannon. The expression on her face went from shock to relief to grateful. He could swear he also saw a touch of admiration and attraction in her eyes. Those big brown eyes surrounded by soft chestnut curls. Lips he wanted to taste so badly he had to extend his showers for a little do-it-yourself time. Richie's pub wasn't one of Tate's regular haunts, but that night he was driving back to the east end from the east. He was driving back to the east end to his house in the Hamptons after spending the day in Manhattan on business for one of his foundations. He hadn't eaten dinner and he knew he'd be in no mood to cook anything after the long drive back. With so many restaurants closed during the winter off-season months, he'd headed to a place he knew would be open. While he was eating, he noticed Shannon and couldn't help wishing he'd sat in her waitressing section. He assumed the extremely short skirt she wore, despite the sub-freezing weather, was one of the ways of increasing her tips. She probably had every man in this pub fantasizing the same thing he was, imagining his hands caressing that pretty derriere of hers and having her sleek, sleek legs wrapped around him. Too bad that included the sleazy guys who thought they could do more than just imagine it, like those two he had taken care of. Tate had returned to Richie's pub three times this past week hoping to run into her, but he didn't see her there. He didn't want to ask any of the pub staff about Shannon, knowing it would likely get back to her if he did, and that might come off as creepy. There was also the possibility that she might have quit. He could see how she would want to want to after an incident like that. So Tate resigned himself to the fact that he'd probably never see her again. It was better that way. She was no doubt an R girl, the kind who wanted a relationship with a capital R. That's an interesting workout, Mina said, cocking an eyebrow. Tate let out a laugh. She'd caught him staring into space. My workouts have been getting slower and sloppier ever since Tim left town. I'd say standing there hanging on the bag like a drunken zombie is about as slow as you can get. Mina Winthrop, his personal assistant, never pulled her punches. He liked that about her, aside from the fact that she was super smart and could multitask like nobody's business. I thought I'd be able to put myself through my workouts instead of having somebody like Tim come here and beat the hell out of me four times a week, Tate said, but I guess I better find another trainer. Would you get Brooke Porter's number for me? Twenty minutes later, after a shower filled with fantasies of the beautiful, sexy waitress, Tate sat at his desk, gazing out the window that overlooked his snow-covered yard, the horizon line of the ocean in the distance. Glancing through his emails and flipping through the pile of handwritten to-do notes from Mina, Tate found the number for Porter Private Training. He liked that Porter Private Training wasn't a gym where some bored part-timer who didn't know too much sat at a front desk and answered the phone. Brooke herself always answered customer calls. She ought to. Her customers were all high rollers paying top dollar to have one of Brooke's trainers come to their home gym a few times a week. And if you didn't have a home gym, you'd have to go elsewhere for a trainer. Hey, Tate. Mas Brooke, master of all trainers, will you please take my confession? Why not, my child? Let's hear it. Master, I thought I could go it alone without a private trainer, but instead I've given into the ways of slovenness. Please continue, my son. I've been sleeping on the bench press. Shame. Daydreaming on the abductor. She gasped. How could you? Texting on the treadmill while going a whopping one mile an hour. Stop. I've heard enough. You realize there's only one way for you to achieve absolution. Of course, his voice was solemn. You need to return to the fold. You'll still have me. You kidding? At these rates, with my blessing, I'll even toss in a free massage with Jeremy. He'll get those muscles ready for your comeback. Tate laughed. <clears throat> Any recommendations as to which trainer? They're all good or they wouldn't be working for me. See for yourself. Go to our website, go to the list of trainers, pick one out, and you can call. You can set it up online or call me. Thanks, Brooke. Tate turned to his desktop computer so he could get full-size images of the trainers pictured on the website. Sure, he could read their specs on his phone, but Brooke's lineup of sexy trainers was fun to look at. She was good, a good enough businesswoman to know 
Running a service that catered to those who could afford the best in life meant she'd better have trainers who were eye candy, whether male or female. Tate had never wanted a female trainer, figuring it would be too distracting, but right now he decided he needed a bit of distraction before he got down to the serious task of selecting a new man to work with him. He scrolled down the list of female trainers. When he got toward the end of the alphabetical list, he froze. His eyes, his focus riveted on a face with coffee brown eyes, the same face he'd been distributing dis, that had been disturbing his sleep every night for the past week. Shannon. He glanced from the headshot to the body shot. She was glorious. Not tall and not one of those skinny types who looked like they needed a good hearty meal. She had curves and muscles that made him picture her running and jumping and diving and doing all kinds of fun things naked in his bed. He had to see her again. Ah, she was new. Just started with Brooke's service and no doubt dumped her waitress job. No wonder she wasn't at Richie's pub when he'd gone there. Shannon Rocklin had, a, had all the right fitness credentials, but it didn't look like she'd won any medals or had any semi-pro experience in competitive sports like most of Brooks' trainers. A degree in theater from UCLA. Theater? Was she any good as a trainer? She had to be. Brooke wouldn't risk hiring her before making sure of that. What did it matter to him how good of a trainer she was? He was going to hire a male trainer anyway. But his mind started conjuring possible ways to see her again. Would Brooke give him Shannon's private phone number? No, she would never do that. Maybe he could get Mina to schedule an appointment with her. No, both women would see right through it. Tate closed the website window, tossed on his jacket, and bounded outside into the cold, brisk air. There were so many beautiful women in the world. Once again, he told himself just to forget about this one. But he knew he couldn't, and he didn't want to.